Hey y'all. So this is gonna be uh interesting situation because I am being led to be transparent because apparently I'm getting the understanding that For lack of a better terms, a lot of people got me fucked up. So, I'm not sure where the disconnection is coming across as far as me being who I am and how it's being taken on the other side. I am in no way explaining myself, but... If there are going to be things said about me, or, I mean, everybody going to talk. And to be honest, I really don't care. I'm only doing this because apparently this is something that needs to be done for my own personal growth. Because... I observe a lot. I intake a lot. I feel a lot. But it's like... I learn different ways to compartmentalize and... Basically function myself like to organize myself as a person to avoid feeling a lot because I feel things very deeply to the point where my emotions my thoughts my Fears, everything is very tangibly felt by me. So, once I understood that a lot of these pains and frustrations I was having in life and in my body were directly related to the things I was doing or was not doing or was allowing to be done to me. You know, any logical sane person, I would think, at least this is my thought process, any person that understands that I'm hurting and me hurting is in some way related to what I am doing. I would feel that the same person would make a choice to stop doing the thing that is hurting them, especially if they're the one complaining about being hurt. So I made a choice for myself to stop doing the things that were hurting me. And the things that were hurting me were not standing up for myself when people had something to say about me just being me and allowing what was said to transform the me that I was being. And that goes way deeper than you think. And I've been here with my family And normally when I end up here, it is for a reason. Because for many personal reasons, which will be discussed in this video, not directly, but how 
it impacted me. Things have happened that have impacted me and I was made to feel like the things that happened either shouldn't have impacted me the way they did, like I was overreacting or maybe I was making it all up. Like I felt like I was creating situations like I don't know. I've been told that I have no filter. I'm not very tactful when it comes to conversation and interactions. I don't really express my emotions well. Um, like I'm very nonchalant. I'm very laid back. And that is because... I realize I just literally realized this yesterday because I'm here with my family and my brother is going through a very hard time. We all are. My stepmom passed away yesterday and it affects me. Things do affect me. I just choose not to let the emotions of it cause me to do things that I already know will harm me. And this doesn't always mean substance abuses or overeating, but that's part of it. Or lashing out at people because you don't want to deal with your own BS that's looking at you in the face. I'm talking about me, not y'all. These are understandings that I came to for myself, which is why I operate and conduct myself the way that I do. Now, I am understanding more and more so that for the most part, the people around me just don't understand that. And I have learned to really be okay with that. But me being okay with that started from a point of wanting validation, wanting love, wanting affection, wanting acknowledgement from somebody. Because my whole life, I felt invisible. And I've come to prefer it that way. Because the honest reality is that I've always been different. I was born this way. It really ain't too much I can do about that. Um, I tried really, really hard. I, I tried for years. Really hard to be the specimen that everyone tried to mold me into I really tried but I came to realize that that is what was harming me so again as a being as a person there are many things that we cannot control but If I'm understanding that I'm being physically affected by myself, not blaming nobody else, I'm saying, and again, this is not like, oh, it just... It was a light bulb one day. I mean, it was, but it was after years. Like, this has been years. Like, what I'm saying is that I've been to therapy. Therapists tell me ain't nothing wrong with me. I have considered 
some extreme options like committing myself or I did I didn't attempt suicide. I thought about it though. I had some pills. But I threw them down. And I understand that people have had much harder lives than I have experienced physically. And there is many things going on in this world that I could not fathom. But what happened to me was very real. I didn't imagine it. I didn't overreact. The problem was that I didn't react enough because I was just so used to being in pain. I had learned how to numb myself. My passions, my drive comes from wanting to provide safe places for people who feel like they got nobody else in this world. I was always, I've always been surrounded by people. I'm about to make one of the biggest steps and choices in my life to just really be on my own. I have never been completely on my own. So, it got to the point where I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what thoughts were mine or what was coming from somebody else. And then, on top of that, I had people actively playing games with my mind. And then, on top of that, I knew what was going on. But I second guessed myself because everybody made me feel like I didn't know what I was talking about. Like I'm speaking foreign languages when I'm I've always been very direct, very upfront. I'm just to the point where I'm over it. I'm over it all. I'm so happy because when I was sitting in the room by myself all the time. Because then nobody want to play with me. Because I was weird. I found joy in my solitude there. I did things like color or play with my Barbie dolls. I played with my Barbie dolls till I was 18, till I left for college. I gave, when I left for college, I gave my Barbie dolls to my god sister. Hey, Sophie King. I miss you, child. But I played with them dolls. And I still have some of them. I haven't played with them. Now I don't know where they at. They somewhere in storage, but like I don't I really don't understand I do understand but I'm trusting the process so I don't know why I'm weird I was born this way um I'm supposed to be writing a book. 
don't know. It might happen. Things are aligning in very interesting ways these days. And it's always been this way. This is what I'm saying. I don't really have words to describe the things that I went through because a lot of it from an outsider's perspective a lot of it was in my head but I was surrounded by people who didn't see the world like I saw it or see it and so I felt isolated it wasn't in the beginning it wasn't anything anybody did I don't think it's just when you're aware of certain things when you feel things the way I feel them it's like a knee jerk reaction it's like you don't have to touch a stove more than once or twice to know not to put your fucking hand on the stove while it's hot so I got tired of it very young I got tired of feeling like shit all the time so I learned how to protect myself and I've been living in this little bubble yeah I'm like sometimes I had like an airhead and I'm in my own world because you know what it's safe there and I'm still here and because people thought I was weird I haven't had a whole lot of real help and support up until this point Re very very recently that's and you know when it happened when I stopped looking for it when I said fuck it I'm gonna support myself I'm gonna do it whether nobody else helped me or not like I've been doing all this time but the only difference between now and then is I'm stopped trying to take care of everybody else too that's not my job. And I ain't mad at nobody. But myself. Because. I don't know when. It became my job. I don't know who made it my job. But I feel like it was probably me. Because. It was just easier to give people what they want. So they can stop making me feel like shit about being who I am. Just because it didn't look like what they felt like it should. Now, I will admit, my mouth can be a little reckless. So, again, I work very hard to filter myself. Like, if y'all really feel like I don't have no tact and no filter... then that's really even more confirmation to me that I'm putting some real work in and that I need to be in a more conducive environment for my peace and well-being. And it's not even like just the immediate people in my vicinity and my circle and my family. I'm not talking shit about my family. I had a very, very, <clears throat> a very peaceful childhood. I had everything I needed, a lot of what I wanted. We are not rich, but I was well taken care of physically. And to the best of the emotional ability of the people I was with, they did their best. At least I choose to think that. And that's what I accept. But at the end of the day, the impact that was had on me and the resulting person I became was very harmful so if anybody really knows me 
Uh, they always know. I always got somebody's kids. And I always got my baby girl crib. Because when I decided to get a dog, I never had, like, I had dogs. But my grandparents, my granddad always took care of the dogs. So she was my first pet other than like fish that I actually took care of and she picked me I went for a different dog I had looked up online for a dog and I had decided on the dog I wanted to get and I went to this place which turned out to be a foster home for dogs and Cleo was there there was like it was a lot of dogs. It was like, excuse me, it was like 10 or 12 dogs there. And there was Cleo, and then there was another dog that looked exactly like her. But that other dog was just nitpicking at her, antagonizer, antagonizer. They play, and the other dog gets snippy, and then Cleo would come and run and lay on my feet, and I would shoot the other dog away. And that happened like three or four times in a span of maybe 10 minutes. So, you know, this is all while the people that ran the place was giving me the information about the dog adoption process and how everything works and all of that. So, and again, like I operate in a different manner. So I assign meaning to different things. To me, that was her picking me. She came on her own accord and she stayed. Everybody, the people who are around her and get to experience her remark at how obedient she is and how intelligent she is and well behaved. I didn't do any of that. <laughs> I don't know, neighbors are yelling. I didn't do any of that. She trained herself. Like, all I did when she came, I made sure she had a place to sleep. Um, She had a crate, but I left the door open. And I put, I want anything. I like to be comfortable. Life is hard enough as it is. So, I like to be as comfortable as possible. I do whatever needs to be done. But, damn it, if I got to do it, I'm going to do it my way and make it as easy and comfortable as possible and one thing my granddaddy always taught me was to work smart not hard and cover your ass so that is what i operate on i do my best to interact with the world in a way that I would be okay with the results either way. Like, I mean, nobody could ever think of the worst case scenario in every situation. But when I make my choices, I think of the worst case scenario that I can imagine. And make my peace with that. So if I'm okay moving forward. Then at that point. There's not too much anybody can say to change my mind. Unless you're giving me valid information that helps me to understand a better choice. I don't give a lot of validation to emotional displays unless I know it is genuinely coming from a loving place and I can't really explain how I know that other than saying like I said I feel things on a very physical level I feel everything I just had to learn when the pain that I was feeling wasn't mine.
and just stop putting myself in situations where I just became an emotional dumping ground. And again, not blaming nobody. Just understanding that because of the way I'm set up, certain things have to be put in place. And the amazing design of the creator and the overwhelming support that I have always had from the most high or whoever because somebody been clearly looking out for me because I've been in situations that fucked my head up I'm not giving details because people know who I am but I've been molested by close family I grew up without a lot of interaction with my dad's family, which, you know, a lot of people with our ethnicity can attest to, but my dad's family literally lived right around the corner. When I was younger, I used to go and visit my grandmother on my own accord just because I just wanted to feel some love. And the grandparents I lived with gave me love. It was just in a way that didn't translate well for the way that I operate. So I was looking for it somewhere else. And I'm like, well, you know, that's my family. That's supposed to feel like love. I would go and take um, little figurines, like, for Mother's Day and Christmas and stuff like that. Now, mind you, I have a very large family on both sides. And I've had some interaction. Like, there was one aunt that I have. She would always come and pick me up and take me and do things. But... <clears throat> She had a heart kind of like mine. She always had somebody's kids. She had daycare. And, you know, I appreciated that. Because all times I was just by myself. So. I did appreciate that. But the older I got. <clears throat> the more things I started noticing. And. The interaction with me was different than interactions with other family members and cousins that were around more, which is fair. They're around more. There's a different relationship, but I felt like a charity case a lot of times. And again, not blaming nobody. I ain't got no beef with nobody. I'm not trying to make nobody look bad. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm telling how what happened impacted me and why I became the person that I became and why I'm choosing to be a different person the real me who I should have been all along and why I really don't care who feels what way about it Is because like my whole life has been a series of interesting unfortunate events like I used to have dreams about 
things like my dreams were very vivid and I've always been very quiet because again because of the way I was raised or in the environments I was in very young I didn't feel like what I had to say mattered or that would warrant any real response so I never told anybody about a lot of stuff until I got much older and once I started talking well, mind you I was grown because it wasn't until I went to college that I decided to be more expressive of my true self. Um, this is getting long, but um. Oh, when I started telling people stuff, I don't know, it was just a random conversation. My mom, I was having with my mom. Well, she was there. I don't know. I know it was her because she was the one that gave me the response. I don't know who else was there, but it was a group setting. It was family. It was chilling. And I was talking about some of my dreams. And she was like, because one of the dreams was about a fire in my backyard. And she was like, no, that really happened. And it was a fire in the park right behind where we used to stay in a different place when I was much younger. But I was like less than two. And there were other dreams about certain things and different things. Like when I get scared, I sing the Oscar Mayer Wiener song in my head like over and over and over again just to calm myself and I'm like why is that song and so um for different circumstances I had been out of contact with like my stepdad and different things so after I started hanging out with them again I became a lot more expressive because you cannot <laughs> be with them and not be expressive but I started singing my song out loud. And he said something like, see, she still remember the song. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, when you were like five, I took you to um, audition to be on the commercial. So, what I'm saying all this to say, apparently I have suppressed a lot because a lot has been coming up since I decided to just turn off the other voices. And my head is so quiet. Like, people think I just be zoned out. Like, what are you thinking or what's wrong with you nothing I'm just enjoying the peace and quiet because for so long my head was so full of thoughts and anxiety and responsibilities tasks stuff that I need to get done stuff I need to remember because I didn't feel like I had no help And, again, the only difference between then and now really is the choice that I made to stop looking for help, but also to accept help from other sources than where I felt like it should come from. And part of that was me learning how to express myself. And it started in Facebook groups. We, everybody know when 
them groups was popping like that. And I just decided, like I did when I went to college, it's like, shoot, nobody knows me here. I wasn't on Facebook like that before. Not really. But I created a different profile. <laughs> well, like, don't nobody know me. I can really be who I am. So I just... When I had a chance to escape, I would go on Facebook and respond in the groups. I wasn't putting on no persona. I was me. And I started seeing the response that I was getting from people when I was just being myself. And meanwhile, I'm still getting the same responses from the people around me. That basically made me feel like I wasn't shit. And again, nothing that they were doing intentionally, I don't think. But that's the way it made me feel. So, I started gravitating naturally to what felt better. But then, of course, that led to the opposite extreme where I just wanted to feel good all the time. And I started kind of neglecting what needed to be done. Or. At least that's the way it seemed. For me and everybody else at the time. And also depends on who who is the one saying what needs to be done. That's the other thing. Who gets to decide what needs to be done? For me. I do. So I had to start taking responsibility. For the fact that I was allowing it because most of the time I knew better. I knew what didn't feel good. But because I had convinced myself that I didn't know what I was talking about, somebody else always knew the answer better than I did. Because when I did know the answer, people got mad at me, so I shut up. Just because I don't say nothing don't mean I don't know what's going on. I just choose to let it play itself out because when I say something... I'm always shot down. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But then when everything really comes out, everything I said was going to happen does. And so that also made me become aware of what I speak. Because I'm like, I don't know if it's happening because I'm saying it. Or if I'm just getting warned. And all I know is when situations happen, I see it play out. And I get to make a choice whether I want to be a part of that or not. And most of the time, I choose not to because I'm tired of hurting. And I'd be damned if I'm going to consciously continue to hurt myself. Or participate in somebody else hurting me. Or allow it, if I can at all do anything about it and what I'm realizing is I can do a whole hell of a lot about it so when I'm silent or I make moves that seem counterintuitive or like I just go left that's cause I done peeped something that somebody probably didn't want me to see or think I was too stupid to pay attention to and instead of me saying something about it or rocking the boat, I just exit stage left. Because I spent too much of my life ignoring what I know and suffering for it. And so what I've learned is that I take care of me very well. I take care of Cleo very well. And since I decided to take care of me very well, 
which meant walking away from people that did not take care of me very well. I'm learning that I took very good care of them too. Even with the scraps I was working with. So, again, if I am a sane person, which, I'm going to be real honest, I ain't too sure about. <laughs> but if I am a sane person, logically I can conclude that if I'm able to take care of myself and those around me to the point where when I decide to not do it, they're mad like, that's my job. And I'm not doing my fucking job. Then obviously I was doing something well. And if it's causing me pain. And since I walked away from it, I have less pain. I have perfect blood pressure. Not almost at a stroke. I don't have any more migraines. Cramps. Anxiety. Fear. Insecurity. Going through people's phones and shit. That's not me. I've done it. And I will if I feel like I need to. But I don't like being that person. I choose not to be that person. Because that's not who I am. That's what I did because of the situations I was in. People made their choices. I made mine. I just got tired of hurting my own feelings. And so I choose not to do that anymore. Mm hmm I don't care who it is. Because at the end of the day, this is all voluntary. I am not responsible for anybody but me. And I take care of me very well. With no help from nobody but the Most High. And who the Most High puts in my path to assist me when I need it. Because I learned how to ask for help when I needed it. But you best believe if I'm asking, it's because I don't feel like I got no other options. So if I ask you and I'm not saying anybody is obligated to help me. But if I ask you and I know that I've given freely of myself to you, even beyond what I knew was my responsibility or even in my better judgment I knew better but because of the way I love and because of the love I have and because of how deeply I feel even to the point of physically feeling other people's pain I choose to treat people in a way that I would want people to treat me because I understand what the pain feels like and I don't like feeling that pain. So. It becomes very hurtful. When. I am antagonized. For choosing not to carry around other people's pain. If I'm removing myself, it's for a damn good reason. And most of the time when I have to remove myself, it's even more painful. Because those are the people who I had let in. I don't let nobody in. So. Now I'm letting everybody in. 
you can see. I got feelings. I just keep them because when I express them, it don't really, really seem to be a point. Except when I express them to God by myself. I get what I need from that because it's, it's been very rare that I got it from anywhere else. And I've learned to be okay with that. And so now when people, I'm finding out people are mad at me or feeling away because I'm living life carefree or might feel like I have things that I shouldn't or that I didn't work for. I work for everything I have. I've been out of work for over a year and a half. Almost. And I've been functioning. I don't live a luxurious life. I just spend my money differently. When I stopped working, I found ways to eliminate my bills. I stopped living beyond my means. I learned what I really need to be comfortable and efficient. And it's not a whole lot when it's just me and Cleo. So, I'm going to take care of me and Cleo and anybody that wants to be a part of my experience is welcome as long as you come in peace and carry your own weight and add value. If I'm quiet, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I'm focused on something that is adding value to me. And I focus my attention on what I am doing to be mindful and present with what I'm doing as much as possible. Because that's where life is. I sit around waiting on one day. When is today going to be one day? But I've also learned that everything happens in divine timing because... I don't know who is in charge or who believe in what, and I ain't putting my beliefs on nobody, but I know that there is a source, there is a creator, there is something that is in charge of everything. And whatever that is, has designed things to operate so efficiently that if we cooperate, we ain't got to do a whole lot. If we work with what we got and appreciate what we got. So, that's it. Uh, I ain't never know I could talk this long, but there it is. So, anybody got questions, you can put them down there. You, if you got my phone number, you can call me. If you don't, I don't know if your question really matters that much to me. Um, you can hit me up on my email if you want. Uh, don't be asking me where I'm going or what I'm doing because I'm not going to tell you. You'll see when you see. Um, I ain't got no beef with nobody. It's all love. I just got to love me first and that has eliminated a lot of need for anybody else that is not actively participating in my well-being. And I'm not saying this to be selfish, but I know now what I've been called to do and what I'm doing ain't even for me anyway. I'm fine. 
where I'm at with nothing. I'm fine. What I'm doing is what I am being directed to do by the most high source creator, whatever it is. I don't know if it's Satan, somebody, I think some people might think that too. I don't know. What I know is the results speak for themselves. And I ain't trying to hurt nobody, including myself. I love my family. All of this is really for me, from my ego. I'm doing this for them. But I got to take care of me first before I can do anything for anybody else. And because I've been put in the position that I have to take care of myself, then I'm be silent until I feel secure enough to share. And if you're not actively a part of that, then I don't feel like there should be much discussion about why I'm not sharing. And I mean that with the most love possible honestly so if we've ever had any type of interaction and you feel any type of way about me in any sort of way I appreciate you I appreciate your interaction because I've learned so much regardless of how I feel about it I'm grateful that's why I have these gratitude videos I'm grateful because I'm still here and I'm fine I love y'all. I really do. Whether you believe it or not, it don't change. And whether I'm present or not, it don't change. My love is free. My love is freely given and it's unconditional. That's why I hurt so much because I don't walk away because of the benefit I know I'm providing the other person. People think I'm doing stuff for them. No, I'm doing it for me. If you're around, you benefit automatically because of how well I take care of me. And because I'm not selfish, I'm going to share if somebody is there. But I learned that I can't just let everybody be there. Everybody don't deserve to be shared with if they're not sharing with me. And whether you believe it or not, that really hurts me. Because I like to share. So, I don't know. This is not an advertisement to come asking me for shit because I'm not giving it to you. If you want to come to me, and there needs to be a business plan or something. Something logical and practical in a way for me to recoup my money or at least to be able to pay it forward to further the work that I'm doing. And that's just where I'm at. So, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm grateful for all the lessons that I've learned. I'm grateful for being able to release these emotions. I'm grateful for being able to walk away with a clean slate. And I'm grateful for the people that have impacted me and have helped me become the person that I am. I like me. I'm cool as shit. And if you don't know that, then I really, I'm sorry for you. Because I'm awesome. And I choose to be around people that agree with that. And these are not just yes people. These are people that help me and inspire me to be better. Not try to keep me small because they don't want to do the work to better themselves. So, I'm going with my people at. And if you feel like you're my people, you're welcome to come. I ain't trying to block nobody out. But don't come with the bullshit. Because once I create my safe space, I have every right to defend it. And I will. In whatever way, shape, or form that may come. So, I'm grateful. Y'all find reasons to be grateful. Because I'm finding a whole lot. 
I'm finding a whole lot of reasons to be grateful. And that's why I'm so happy. But I really can't be a bitch. So I try not to go there. I don't like that. I like being happy. It's more fun. Love y'all. Have a great day. Find reasons to be grateful. <laughs>